Hi, my name is Sam Johnson and I'm a voice teacher. Today I'm going to be reacting to the 2019 Super Bowl halftime show. I have been pretty nervous, honestly, about reacting to this because I watched it live and it was really boring. So um, I didn't really want to do it just because it's boring. But a lot of people have requested for me to break this down, whether they feel like they like it a lot or they think that it's bad and they want to see why they think it's bad. I'm not sure, but here we go. Most of it was kind of in tune. The end of it was a little bit not. The whole show, he's just a little bit pitchy. It sounds to me kind of like he can't hear himself well or something, but everything is tending to be under. So that kind of bothers me, the fact that it's not really good pitch all the way through. But what bothers me the most about this last part is it just doesn't seem passionate. There doesn't seem to be any sort of will to be there. It's just kind of shut off. I do like that he's not over singing. See, like this part's okay. It just doesn't seem engaged. Like that's the first time that he sounded engaged in this, where he did that shout out to everyone. And that part was kind of a nice connected part of his voice. It's just that he's not taking any of the characteristics that he has for that high shout out and applying them to this part of his voice. It doesn't feel engaged to me. It doesn't feel like he's trying to communicate anything to people. It just sounds like he's there going through the actions. And I like this song. You can hear at the end of some of his phrases, it doesn't really sound supported. It sounds a little bit spindly or wobbly at the end. It just doesn't feel like he's staying consistently engaged through the entirety of his phrase. The stuff that's working well for the beginning, it still isn't very interesting, I guess. I mean, it's not moving around dynamically very much. It doesn't have much style to it. It's just kind of there, but at the end of it, he loses even that, which almost gives it more style, but also just sounds nervous to me. Mostly on pitch. That part felt not controlled. That's a little under. I don't know why he's having these pitch issues though, because there's nothing with how he's singing that should make him be off pitch. And he's proven for most of it that he can be on, which to me sounds more like an engagement issue or a consistency issue. It doesn't feel to me like he cares as much. And it's evident in the sound of his voice. Just from doing this about a million times since 2003, he has the muscle memory to be able to just go out there and have something decent come out. But it's not. And that's what's really surprising to me. I think that there would be more there just from how much he has practiced it and how many times he's performed it. See, like, it's 
disconnected. And this is the first time that he's looked like he wants to perform to me. And whether that's nerves or what, I'm not sure. I don't really want to speculate, but I mean, this is the first time that I've seen him try to work the crowd or play around with that at all. And then we all know that, you know, this was kind of a fan service and then they messed it up. So like, why include this part if you're not gonna include the whole song? That I'm not really sure about. It's just weird. It's just the weirdest programming. It's just bad programming. Like, my issue is more with who decided to put all of this back to back and then have a verse that's gonna be mostly censored. Like, it's not good for a broad release for a live release that millions of people are gonna be watching. Because you can't hear half of it, you can't understand what he's saying. And I know I'm talking over this, I don't care if that's an issue that you have with me in my video, go watch the original video. But why would you want to? Like, there are better videos of him performing this other places. I like this song, I like Travis. It's just confusing, none of this makes sense to me. Then he's kind of engaged because he's working with someone else. He's trying to do some crowd work a little bit. There's just not much to say. Like, that's the problem with this and why I was debating on whether or not to do this video. Spent 24 hours anymore, I was real. And now he's closed off again. We spent the weekend getting even We spend the late nights making things right between us. But now it's all good, babe. Roll that backward, babe. Let me know. It's transition up into his falsetto. It was a little bit messy, but like most of it was right. Again, most of my problems with this are not his voice. He's a little bit sloppy with things all the way through. The issue is it's boring. The issue is whoever chose to put Maroon 5, which a lot of people really don't care for, and that doesn't really translate well for this type of performance, and they decided to put it at the middle of a halftime show. The whole thing in general was doomed before it starts, in my opinion. I like the first Maroon 5 record. As it's gone on, I haven't really um, been as tuned in for Maroon 5. I've still respected Adam as a singer. I think that he has a lot of control over his voice. I think that he's generally in pretty good form and does things well. But with this one, it just doesn't feel engaged. Nothing feels like he cares to be there. And this song, it's, it's just boring. And then this is just. And then she's just gonna riff for a while to try to add something interesting to it. But it's not authentic. It doesn't feel organic to the song. So like, what's the point? And she can wail, but like, is this the right thing? Show your love. Show your love. I actually love this song. Nothing feels like he's just connecting with people. And
See, and he's sung this a million times, so he doesn't have to think, and the voice is going to be there, mostly. It's just that the point of technique, the point of practice is so that you can get out of your head, stop thinking about the technique, and communicate what you're trying to communicate. With this, I don't see him getting past that. To me, it feels like he's going inside himself to try to look vulnerable or something. There were times where he was interacting with the audience and he kind of opened up and he looked bright for a second and then you could see him collect himself and then he was back into this like vulnerable 2003 place again, but it wasn't vulnerable. It wasn't sharing anything new with people and it's not letting the emotion affect how he's singing this song. It's just on autopilot. That's what feels the worst about this to me is that he could do so much more but it feels so closed off. And why, when watching it, my entire reaction was, this is boring. See, that's fine, that sounds great. That is lower than the original key though. And the reason is because when he goes to that beloved on the F sharp, he's kind of pulling chest. And you can hear it on the original recording. I listened to it right before this because I love singing along to that song. But when he goes, well, it's pretty flipped, and then comes back to be loved, where it's a much larger sound, I think that he just doesn't really trust that note as much. And you can hear it's fine, but like if he carried it up to the G instead of, she will be loved, like, it's just a little bit more unstable if he carries that up. So he can do it, but just by that decision and how they're programming it and what kind of keys they're choosing, it shows to me that he doesn't trust it, that he's not trusting what he's doing. Maybe he is a little bit nervous. And maybe they've performed it like that for a long time, but I don't know. And the lanterns look kind of cool, but it's not innovative. That time, that was up to the A. He thinned out enough, he let it move up into his head. It was a fine note. He did it fine, and he finally looked like kind of interesting with it. Just do that all the way through. Again, his voice isn't really the problem with this. Most of the time. If you could get Big Boy, why don't you just have Big Boy do the whole thing? Why don't you ask Andre to come out, have him do like Roses, Hey Ya, it's in Atlanta, there are good Atlanta musicians there that have hits. Do that. Ready for action, nipping in the pub, we never relaxing, our pants is never... See, and then he's present, he's relaxed, he's moving. Compare just his body language to what Adam was doing for the entire thing. And the camera was just focused on Adam standing there, so of course the whole thing's gonna look boring. So click at the ticket, let's see your seat down fast. Truck rally, let you in the back seat. And good self-editing so that we don't have a huge five-second block of nothingness, because he knows what he's doing. Travis is very good. I like his music a lot, but I mean, come on. See, this is fun. But there's nothing coherent about this show. Nothing at all. And then there goes the lip service to Atlanta, and we're back to this. I don't really care that he's taking off his clothes with it. But I mean, that's a really weird gimmick to have and have that be like your entire planned thing because you can tell 
He counted the layers. He knew where he was going to end up and when he was going to take things off. Nothing about it was natural. It's just planned and boring and a way to show off his body and tattoos, which like maybe he's proud of that and that's fine. But nothing in this show feels like it cares. It all just feels like taking a bunch of different elements that have kind of worked before. We take the lanterns because people like that. And we throw that on top of it. And we take this band that has had a bunch of hits, but isn't really musically relevant. And a lot of people don't really care about it. And we throw that in. And then we take one artist from Atlanta and throw it in. And we take an artist that is very, very famous right now and we throw it in. Nothing feels right all the way through. It doesn't feel programmed correctly. Just That's what bothers me the most about this is it shouldn't have happened in the first place. And then Adam looks disinterested to me, or nervous, or something, but none of this makes sense. What I do like is when he's going back down to the really low notes, low notes, he's not beefing them up, and then he's able to maintain the same resistance when he goes to the higher notes. So it doesn't sound as much like he's grabbing because he's not engaging at the bottom. It's a flip. As it went on, it, the pitch kind of sagged a little bit. Also, the mix is really interesting. Like, his vocals are so present. You don't hear them able to fit in with the rest of the instrumentation. I think that he's turned up a little bit too much. Everything about it is a little off. He's able to transition. <laughs> if we can take one thing from this entire video, when he did that moves all the way up, he had a pretty smooth transition up and then a smooth transition down. I would bet that the resonance, the feeling that he feels with that is that it's moving up and down, that it's not getting stuck here or stuck here, that he's just letting things happen. And I do like that about his voice. It has this consistency throughout it. So of course people are gonna be bummed out about watching this because none of it makes sense. There's just nothing that like blows me away about it. There's nothing that makes me really interested about it other than the nostalgia for the songs about Jane songs. Travis was fine. It just wasn't appropriate putting him right next to a pop act like this. It feels like just lip service to what is the biggest genre in the world right now, which is hip hop. It's listened to by way more people. I mean, yeah, of course, that's just this insanely popular song right now. So why wouldn't they ask him to come in? Because if they cared about this show at all, if they cared about this halftime show, you might want to have some sort of coherent programming. And there just was none of that. It feels so tone deaf. Like they think that just putting this gospel choir behind them will suddenly make people from Atlanta like them or having Big Boy come out for like two minutes would suddenly make people okay with this. But they're trying to serve too many groups and none of them worked. The intention for how they were trying to serve them was just let's find something popular, not does this make sense or is this going to sound good. All of that together made this thing so boring. And I think that that's the worst crime you can have as a performer is just being boring. 
Why would anyone want to watch this? Not just because like, I don't think this is cringy or anything, because it's not. There wasn't any part of that that I'm like, ugh, come on guys, except for, you know, him taking off the shirt, whatever. But I don't care about that as much as other people seem to. For me, watching this just doesn't motivate me to do anything. And that's worse. So, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Don't be boring.